Hey up guys, part number three of Tamiya's 48 scale F16. We're doing the aggressor. Now this part, we're actually gonna work on a cockpit tub. So we're gonna use the Quintus Studios details and get the um, front office all taken care of and get the fuselage buttoned up. Hey, welcome back to part number three, I guess now, with the F-16 build and working on a cockpit tub. It's one of my most, most exciting parts of the build. I really enjoy doing the front office. Now, to make it a little bit easier, we've got the Quinter Studio set right here. And as you can see, we got the, um, it comes with a seat and it comes with a tub and the instrument panel. And basically you get these kind of guys, which are um, 3D printed. And just dip them in water, releases it, and then PVA glue down, which we'll show you a little bit later on. So, part number one here is the cockpit tub. And um, you see I've sanded some detail off here. And on here, and basically on the other side, these two pieces, just going to take a medium sanding stick. I'm just going to sand off the detail, which I started already on this one, and just glue them in place. Once those four pieces are glued in place, I'm just going to give it a quick coat or dark gold grey and then we come back and we can start applying these guys um, in a little bit. Now spoiler, apologize for the audio on this, I'm running straight for the camcorder, I gotta run to the airport in a few hours for a work trip to Europe and I haven't hooked up my um, external mic yet because I just moved locations around in, the, in my house here while I'm filming. So bear with me with this one, um, again I apologize if it's gonna be bad audio um, but yeah let me go ahead and glue these on, um, get it painted up and we'll be right back and start applying these Quinter Studio decals. All right, so we got it painted up, as you can see here, using the usual dark gold gray, and I use MRP um, 100. Dark gold gray, just whole tub painted, um, nothing crazy gone in there, and um, just know that's a little blue tack coming through the bottom here. Um, so, got the tub, and now we're gonna take the Quinter Studios sheet, and there's not much to go here, but it's done this many times before, but basically you can cut off the one I want, just like a decal. And I'll grab my tweezers. And some more mortar. And this piece is obviously gonna go in here. So I'm just gonna dip it in the water for a few seconds and all it's going to do is going to release it from the backing paper. Now it's no adhesive like a decal, you do need some glue. So this is why I bring in my um, just usual PVA glue, like a thin one. This is um, Thin Blend Gator Grip, which I absolutely love. If not, just use any PVA glue and just add a touch of water just to water it down. And I'm just going to need a little bit here and with a toothpick I'm just going to get some glue Smear it on. Uh, the reason I use this and not super glue is it gives me plenty of wiggle room. I got you know an hour or so to move this thing around um, without it sticking. So now coming back to this guy. You can kind of see it's come loose. And this is way different to um, Red Fox. It's less brittle and it's more kind of decal-y. I'm just going to put it on here. And just going to give it a little nudge, make sure we're in the right spot. And is it um, easy as that. So the advice is just to kind of work in certain areas, let it dry, especially on the instrument panel. Um, for a couple of hours, come back and do more parts. But I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more on here. And as you can see, if I hold it close to the camera, it's way better than me would me if I painted the thing, it looks way nicer, I think, neater. So I'm going to go around, like I said, mention go around, paint, add all these off camera, and we'll come right back. Okay, so put all the um, Quinter Studio decals on, um, or 3D printed, whatever you want to call them. Now, I know this one slipped somehow, and I'm um, not quite straight. No big deal, it's 48 scale, you're not going to see much once it's in the cockpit top anyway. So that's that guy done. Seat done. Although they paint a little bit in the headrest still. Um, seat belts cut to length, so they're very long, so remember to cut them to whatever you want. Um, not sure they're exactly in the right configuration, whatever, but close enough for me again in this scale. Should be no problem at all. 
and the front here of the instrument panel again. Super tiny, I'm not sure how much you can see on the camera. And that is it. So, I painted the outside of this black, um, this serves a 1500 black, which is my favorite kind of black, utility black, um, per the instructions, um, inside painted with the carpet color. And what we're gonna simply do now is take the lower fuse large, which we've done a lot of work on already, and this just glues on place like that, and then we can sandwich it all together. So, plenty of work left to do. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on that, um, painting the seat, and um, be right back. So, got it put together as you can see, front end looking very nice, no problems. A um, little bit of a line through here, not much to worry about. Um, but again, we're together, and the bottom wing parts added, this little guy added too, and added the raster hook. Now, the front end, as I mentioned earlier, I'll show up this bit of a fit issue with this, and it must be me, because Tammy kits them just fall together. So, the main thing was, was a gap along the top there, which is no problem, it's underneath, we can fill it. Um, but here, it wasn't fitting very good right here, and it's it was, um, I'm guessing this center part, although it looks flush, Maybe it's protruding too much. There wasn't enough gap because this, this part here rests on top and it'll stick out way too much. So I had to clip a little bit off the end and just sanded it way down, sand a little bit off there too. And if I push it right against it and down, it's a little bit short now, I can fill it, but um, it's looking a lot better. So I have to really sand it down to wafer thin um, to create like a flush kind of fit back here, um, which is still not going to be perfect, but a lot of filler and sanding is going to be fine. Um, but still, and I do have the gaps down the side here, a mill on each two, so I'm not sure exactly what I did there when I built this um, this part back here, but definitely something out by like a millimeter, but nonetheless, we can get it glued together and it should be okay. Okay, so, put it together, um, a little bit of filling here and there, um, as we saw earlier, and um, nothing too major, just a little, uh, little pieces here and there just to kind of tie it all together. Um, this guy's in, held with elastic band where I glued. Um, probably needs a little bit more filler just in there. Um, and put the nose on and we're in good shape. So that's the main assembly done. Um, again, with town I shouldn't really need any filling at all. So I'm thinking somewhere back here I made a mistake, but nonetheless, you know, I filled it in, took care of it all. And once the paint goes down, it'd be no problem at all. So that's the tub in. I'm not going to worry too much about any kind of weathering because, again, it's kind of 48 scale. By the time the seat's in there, you're not going to really see anything. So, main assembly's done. Um, very nose heavy now, but I weighed in the front um, and um, ready for paint next week. So, very exciting. So, next week we can get it primed up and um, use, create some custom masks that get that beautiful camo scheme down. But thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.